This dam is absolutely huge. The reservoir behind it will be roughly the size of London, while the dam itself will be twice as tall as the Golden Gate Bridge. Welcome to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, an epic name for an epic mega project. It's decades in the making and forms part of the country's so-called economic miracle, largely because it has the potential to lift millions out of poverty, but could also be dangerous part that ignites a whole new conflict in the region, a fight for the Nile. This is the largest dam in Africa, so large it has its own classification. It's a mega dam. Once complete, it will produce over 5,000 megawatts of electricity, more than double Ethiopia's current output today. And its reservoir will hold 74 billion cubic meters of water. The numbers here don't get any less overwhelming. The dam itself is made of 10 million cubic meters of roller compacted concrete and is set to include two power stations, three spillways, and a saddle dam. The main dam itself will be 145 meters deep by 1.7 kilometers long, while the saddle dam supporting the main structure will be an astonishing 4.8 kilometers long by 45 meters high. There will be two outdoor power stations on either banks of the river with the capacity to generate roughly 2,000 to 3,700 megawatts of power. The first step of the journey to build something as enormous as this kind of set the tone for the rest of the project. The casual diversion of the Blue Nile River in 2013, now as dramatic as it sounds. It's actually pretty common when building dams. Here's how it works. Most dams are built over rivers, but to pour concrete, you need a dry working area. So diversion channels or tunnels are formed around the side of a dam's location for the periods of its construction. If you're going through hard rock, explosives are typically used to clear a path, while soft soils and rocks are excavated. Once there's a dry space for workers, foundations are laid, they have to be strong enough to withstand the weight of the dam and the enormous water pressures acting on them. The Renaissance Dam will be 145 meters deep, almost the height of a skyscraper. And that 74 billion cubic kilometers of water behind it will create a lot of pressure. So the soil and rocks in the ground below the dam have to be spent, tested and are sometimes removed and replaced with stronger materials. Once the dam is complete and in place, the diversion channels around it are blocked and water typically builds into a reservoir behind the dam structure. That's exactly what happened at the Hoover Dam on the Arizona-Nevada border. Water is led through openings in the dam as necessary and often harnessed for hydroelectric power. The immense size of the Renaissance Dam has likely required special on-site concrete batting plants to be set up close to the worksite, increasing efficiency and helping ensure more control over the delivery of materials. Something that's essential once you have started a big concrete pour. But a lot of the construction details for the Renaissance Dam have been kept under wraps and that's all due to the somewhat fragile political nature of this project. You see, the dam is being built here on the Blue Nile, just 30 kilometers upstream from the Sudan border, and it's caused fierce debate over who exactly owns the Nile and the water flowing in it. Further down over is Egypt. Egypt is pretty much entirely built around the Nile. An astounding 85% of the country's water comes from just this one source and some 90% of the country's population live within a few kilometers of the famous river. Canals from the Nile irrigate farms and support cities, agriculture and fishing. The Nile has breathed life into his desert region for thousands of years. And if something were to happen to jeopardize that water source, well, the consequences would be disastrous. And Egypt knows this. Now to design any kind of dam, let alone a mega dam the size of London, you need to pretty solid grasp on engineering and math. While the way you learn to solve equations at school may have been a bit daunting, tensions in the region are high, and this dam seems to be at the center of it. Egypt was even reportedly prepared to bomb it to protect their stake in the Nile. So, why would Ethiopia risk a potential war? All for a shiny new dam? Well, its government is hoping that this mega project will help lift the country out of the poverty. Half of all Ethiopians today do not have access to electricity. The dam will change that. The country is already on the fast track to achieving its economic goals. Ethiopia has become Africa's fastest growing economy. This is in part boosted by massive investment in infrastructure. During this period of transformational growth, Ethiopia managed to reduce the number of people living in extreme poverty dramatically from over 50% of its population to 31%. It's been called an Ethiopian economic miracle, and it's becoming a model for other African countries. Major infrastructure projects play such an important role in this process, 
For its part, Ethiopia has argued that effects of the dam will be minimal on the countries that are downstream, while benefits will be plentiful and can be shared. But the debate over who can lay claim to the water continues. Today, talks between the countries have almost completely broken down with no agreement met, despite the dam now being 90% complete and scheduled to be filled within three years. Whatever the outcome, there is a piece of infrastructure that's likely to reshape more than just rivers in the region. You can learn more about this massive dam and other topics on our channel. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more the definitive video, kindly subscribe our channel.